Are you curious what a modern underwriting process would look like for cyber risk insurance? Today, you're in luck. I'm going to show you what Google Cloud has done to optimize the cyber risk insurance process. Stick around. This is going to be a lot of fun. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Elias Kineser, and today we're going to continue to answer the question, do you need cyber risk insurance? Part two. Now, in today's video, we're going to do a demo of Google Cloud's process of how Google Cloud helps modernize, helps facilitate the underwriting process between clients and insurance companies in order to help move this process forward. But before we do that, let's take a look at a world without what Google is doing. So what I'm showing you on the screen right now is the application that a customer would typically fill out in order to send to the underwriters to begin the process of a cyber risk insurance. Now, as you can see, this is a very, very long application. And the questions here tend to be yes, no questions. And in most cases, these are questions that are extremely difficult to answer with a yes or no. Again, I've given this example in the last video. And if you haven't seen the last video, if you haven't seen part one of this, I will make sure to link it somewhere up here. But these are very difficult questions to answer with yes, no. Take, for example, two-factor authentication. Do you have two-factor authentication enabled? Well, kind of. I have two-factor authentication enabled for my admin users, but I don't necessarily have it for all other users. And there's no way as part of this application process to explain that. And even if you explain that, it's, it becomes messy, right? Now you have to explain all of these different things and you have to assume that maybe the underwriter has a technical background. And then it's based on the underwriter to take this information and figure out, well, is the customer telling me the truth? How do I verify? How do I validate? It becomes complex. And again, this application is primarily focused on security. And like we talked about in the earlier video, cyber risk insurance, these insurance companies should also evolve. This shouldn't be just about security. Yes, there's a lot of security attacks and security threats, but this should also be about availability and everything that is needed to run an environment digitally, whether it's in Google's cloud or any other environment. So what I wanna show you now is a demo that I did with Google. So uh, thanks to Google for helping put this demo together. This is not a sponsored video, but Google Cloud is the only one of the hyperscalers that actually had a process that had a tool that is taking the right steps. So again, here I wanna give them kudos and I wanna invite the other cloud providers to do something similar so that collectively we can start to address this problem. So we're gonna see, we're gonna take a look at this demo. It's gonna show us the risk manager tool, and it's also gonna show us the process of how we submit our information from Google Cloud to the underwriters within these insurance companies. So just to give you a quick update of kind of where we are in the world, um, this is known as a Google Cloud console. So anytime you see that blue bar across the top um, and this menu here on the side, um, we refer to this internally as Pantheon, but publicly you'll just hear us or see us write this as a Google Cloud console. Under the console, um, there are several hundred products that a customer might encounter when they come in here, um, but we're gonna live under the security tab here uh, and you can see risk manager. Um, all Google Cloud customers have access to risk manager. We don't restrict this um, from anyone, there is no allow listing. 100% uh, of our uh, of our uh, Google Cloud Console enabled customers can access this tool. Um, and what you're seeing right now is what the customer see after initial onboarding. If you'd like to see screenshots, I do have screenshots of the onboarding process itself. Um, but once the customer does the initial onboarding, this is the screen they'll see. Uh, during that onboarding, we will prompt the customer to set up automatic reporting. You can see that menu over here on the right. Um, where we allow the customer to select daily, weekly, or monthly reports. Um, I emphasize to customers, and I'll, and I'll share with you, um, Google does not charge uh, to generate these reports, to store these reports, or to use this tool in any way. And so it's truly a customer decision on whether they would like to see this data represented daily, weekly, or monthly. Um, and we give that customer the option um, here in the tool. Once the tool starts generating reports, um, they'll see a column just like this that shows that daily generated report, and they'll see essentially uh, four pieces of information. Um, one is that timestamp that, that report is generated. Two is the net aggregate number of findings of the report. 
whether this report was reviewed or not. I'll show you what this means here in just a moment. Um, and then options to download or delete the report out of the tool if they want to either export this or uh, essentially uh, permanently delete it. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this most recent timestamp that's going to take us into um, the most recent report. Um, and it'll load to look something like this. Now, my demo environment, um, this specific demo environment is used only by me. Uh, so there's not a lot of activity in here. Uh, so I apologize that there's not um, too many uh, findings, um, but you can see that we auto sorted on finding zero. So I'm just gonna remove this. Uh, this is gonna ensure that all of the different options are available to you here in the tool and I'll sort uh, to show the max number of findings. Um, and we'll, we'll poke around the tool here together. So the first thing I wanna call your attention to is the status reviewed up here. Um, you saw this represented on that first page, but there's actually a couple different options. Um, because we recognize that this is potentially sensitive data, right? This is risk and security information. Um, we give the customer an explicit option here um, to mark this report as reviewed, whether it's approved to share, or do not share. Um, and that toggle is available to customers here. Below that, we give an introduction to the Center for Internet Security or CIS benchmarks, what we're doing and why these were selected, as well as um, the total number of findings and the total number of scanned uh, assets, otherwise known as evaluations. Um, these are important information for two reasons. The total number of scanned assets represents um, the scope or size of an environment. The larger your Google Cloud environment, the more assets or resources we would expect to find. And the number of findings is essentially the number of um, unfavorable, unfavorable or divergent configurations. Now, the interesting thing is here uh, is when we talk about this, we often actually refer to them as observations rather than findings. Um, the reason is a customer might choose to configure their environment in a specific way that is divergent from uh, what would normally be considered a best practice, but that customer might have a, a, a reason, right, an intentional reason for doing it that way. And so calling it an observation or referring to it um, colloquially as an observation emphasizes that every customer's environment is unique uh, and the customers might make decisions um, that are specific to their circumstance. If we scroll down into the tool, you'll notice a couple different things. The first is this ID column. We take this ID directly from uh, the CIS benchmark. Uh, so it makes it very easy for customers to correlate this back with the, uh, the public standard and understand uh, what's going on. We then assign this an impact rating. This impact rating comes from our security command center team. Um, we'll actually get into security command center here on the left in just a few minutes, um, but we pull that, that rating from them. In this benchmark description, we explain what we're looking for. It's important to note that we've actually Googleified this um, so we didn't take the benchmark explicitly. What we did is we took it and then we interpreted it uh, into a Google Cloud environment, ensuring that our customers get um, the most appropriate uh, detail for them to understand what we're actually looking for and how we expect them to configure their environment. A good example of that down here is where you see Cloud SQL or Cloud Storage. Notice how they're capitalized terms. Um, these are product names. So in the public standard, it may refer to uh, as RDBMS or relational databases, um, but an RDBMS in Google Cloud land is often Cloud SQL, which is our managed product. And so we've made that uh, standard a little bit more explicit here by adding Google products. The same thing here uh, is storage, right? This would be considered blob or object storage. Um, the brand name for that at Google is GCS. And so you can see that name was, was taken through. The interesting thing is for all of these, you also notice that they're hyperlinked. If I click on any of these, what it'll actually do is take me into Google's published documentation, um, giving customers additional information about what the standard is, how we're measuring it, and perhaps most importantly, how to remediate this finding. And so if the customer does want to come back later and say, how do I make this better? How do I improve this? We're actually providing the customer literal step-by-step -step guidance on how to do that. I'm going to come back into the risk manager tab and continue across. You see, we also have the networking, uh, I'm sorry, the benchmark topics such as networking or logging. Uh, make it easy to group and assign these uh, these uh, tasks out to different uh, groups within the customer's organization. And then this is the most important three columns, total resources, scanned resources, and findings. Total resources um, is an independent column that we pull from a tool known as Cloud Asset Inventory. Um, this is the total number of assets or resources the environment subject to this control. The scanned resources, however, is a number of those assets that have then been, uh, have been evaluated for the control. And while in general, we would expect the scanned resources and the total resources to be the same, there are situations where they'll be different. Um, as an example, you can see here, where scanned is uh, three and total is four. Um, this might happen because a resource was created or deleted since the last time that scan was run. Um, it might be because the customer put an exclusion in place um, for some business reason, uh, but we show both 
to ensure that the customer understands the scope of this report and has a really solid understanding of whether this is a wall-to-wall complete report um, or some subset of that. Now this findings column, uh, we talked about it a little bit over here on the left, the findings is where we see those unfavorable observations or those divergent observations. Um, the correct answer for findings is always going to be zero or rather the intended uh, the intended number would always be zero. Um, some of these instructions, some of these descriptions are positive. You shall do this. Others are negative. You shall not do that. Findings will always be zero. And so when you see a non-zero uh, findings count, that would imply that there's something um, worth looking into. You'll notice that much like the description, the findings are also hyperlinked. And so if we were to click on, let's say, uh, that's a good one. We can click on, uh, we'll click on private Google access here right at the top. What this will actually do is in the tool, you'll see we're moving from risk manager, which is currently in blue, up to security command center, uh, which will take us out of our risk tool into our security tool, uh, where we now have very detailed information um, on that finding. And so as an example, I can click in here um, and see a full uh, write-up on what was detected, right? What's the description? What's the time? What's the state? Uh, you know, who are the contacts that may be involved in remediating this? What are the network and resource names? as well as customized remediation instructions. So unlike on the benchmark description where we provide um, standard remediation or, or uh, generic remediation instructions, if the customer has access to the security command center tool, which is a paid product, um, we'll actually customize those uh, remediation instructions to make it even easier and more straightforward for the customer to, uh, to take action on that behavior. Uh, so that's the tool in a nutshell. Um, you know, when the customer is ready to share the report, uh, they've reviewed it, they're happy with it, they come in here and they flip it to approve to share, um, the customer will then have access to this button over here where it says send report to insurance partners. When they click on this, it loads uh, the sharing panel uh, where you can see we, you know, mention our partnership with Munich and Allianz um, as well as provide customers access to more information if they want it um, about that, that partnership. We allow the customer to come in here and select their broker now, again, Monica mentioned earlier that we do have an open brokerage model. So there's always this option down here at the bottom. My broker's not listed. Uh, but if it's a broker that we've onboarded um, into the tool, they can directly select that broker here. We have to uh, enter their contact name, check the box and hit agree. Um, and just to show you the next step, I'm going to go ahead and just type in some information here. We'll then give the customer one last opportunity um, to acknowledge that they are sharing this data with a third party. Um, we do this for security and privacy controls um, so that customers can't accidentally share this information. We want to make sure they're aware of what they're doing. Um, and then we give them the option to send. Once they send the data, um, this is automatically transmitted through a data pipeline directly to the insurance carriers, um, ensuring that they're able to then start uh, working with this information and incorporating into their underwriting. Uh, but that's, that's the uh, current customer workflow in a nutshell. So what did you guys think? I thought that was pretty cool. Now, like I said, right, the, the tool's not perfect. There's still a long way to go, but it is the first attempt by anyone that is trying to solve this very important problem. I cannot believe that in today's world, in today's era, as so much talk is happening on digital transformation, so much is moving to digital, but very few are talking about cyber risk insurance. And specifically, cyber risk insurance is being dominated by the security teams, by the security folks. You say cyber risk insurance, you type that into Google, all you're going to see is security and risk. Well, it's not enough, it's not true, and this has to evolve into a lot more than just security. I hope this information was valuable. I hope you enjoyed the demo. Stay tuned to the podcast. The podcast is going to be super informative. We're going to have a representative from Google Cloud. We're going to have a representative from one of the insurance companies. And we're going to talk about this process. We're going to talk about what it takes to get someone insured. We're gonna talk about why it's just security. Why is the pricing so expensive? We're gonna cover a ton of questions during the podcast, so make sure you stay tuned for that by hitting that like, by subscribing, by sharing, and most importantly, by hitting that notification bell so that you're alerted the next time I upload a video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one.